Vice! You dumbass! Start making sense, you rotten book, or you're gonna be sorry. Maybe I'll rip your pages out one by one, or maybe I'll put you in the goddamn furnace. How can someone with such a big smart brain get hypnotized like a little bitch, huh? Oh, Shadow Lord, I love you, Shadow Lord. Come over here and give Vice a big sloppy kiss, Shadow Lord. Now pull your head out of your goddamn ass and start fucking helping us! Near. A common word. I mean, on this channel, I mean, I don't know if you guys hear the word near on a daily basis. You may have heard me talk about this game before in the past, and for good reason. Simply put, because this game is amazing, and I'm trying to have it engraved in your mind so that you'll finally go out and play it to see what all the hype is about. But really, I don't blame you for not playing the game yet. I mean, when I first saw the game, I thought it looked terrible. It was lacking color, the combat looked dull, the game itself wasn't exactly the prettiest game out there, especially since Final Fantasy 13 just came out a few months before Nier. And then when I found out we couldn't play as the brother Nier that looked younger, instead we had to play as this barbarian looking Nier, all interest I had at the time completely went out the window, and I shifted all focus towards Final Fantasy 13. But, you know, we don't talk about that game over here. Sounds good. So this will be my first video dedicated to Nier. You probably think this should have been one of the very first videos I've made since I'm always talking about this game, but this will be the first in my new series called You Should Be Playing. What exactly does this series entail? I'm glad I asked. I want to highlight games that never got the attention that they really deserved. So games like Yakuza, Gotcha Force, Shadow Hearts, Steambot Chronicles, and so on are games I want to tackle. Anyways, I'm getting off track here. Let's get back to talking about that Nier. That rhyme. So what exactly is Nier? Well, Nier is just the default name of the main character. I mean, that's that's really all it is. But as a game, you know like how when you ask one of your friends what type of music they listen to and they give you some response like, I'm in a post Kurt Cobain, Euro Death Geometry Smooth Jazz Viking Core from the 90s. Nier is basically that. Nier takes a lot of genres and combines them into one. Bullet hell shooters, we got that. Puzzles, got that too. Text-based adventures, that's there. 2D platformers, got it. Harvest Moon type game. That's there too. Nier is what Nier wants to be, and it does a great job at being Nier. If Nier feels like, hey, you know what? I don't want to be an action game right now. Right now, I want to be a pinball game or a rhythm game. That's cool too, because Nier is nothing. But at the same time, Nier is everything. Nier tells the story of a father and his friends consisting of a floating, creepily, but awesome magical skeleton, a magical book, and a hot-headed chick. These are the characters that you'll be traveling along with throughout the entire game, and they're all amazing. Easily one of my favorite group of characters in all of gaming. And this is saying something, especially seeing as how Kavya also made Drakengard. In that game, I mean, god, everybody in that game was terrible. Don't try to defend it either, they were all terrible. You had a kid who was in love with the story of an ancient hero that he was willing to cause the apocalypse just to be called a hero. There was an elf who killed and ate children because she thought they would be safer in her stomach. Then there was some guy who was upset and angry by the death of his brothers because they were killed while he was away. And do you know why he was away? Well, he was in the forest having sex with little boys. And he somehow manages to be the least worst person in this game. And then there was the protagonist, Kaim. Dude's nothing more than a psychopathic murderer who loves to kill and enjoy himself in the blood and guts of his friends and enemies. He often kills kids while they cry and beg him not to, but since everybody in this game is terrible, he does it anyways. Clearly, you can see why I'm not exactly exactly fond of these characters. If you're interested in the Dragon Guard series, I'll put a link to Mr. Clemps' video in the description if you're interested. He's done a pretty great job at breaking down the series, so you should go check it out. Nier is actually connected to the Dragon Guard series, and I really don't want to try to explain the whole thing to you guys, because doing so would be like me trying to explain to you the meaning of life, which is Nier. And since Nier is the meaning of life, that would require me to tell you guys what Dragon Guard is all about, and you know, I I don't got the time to be doing all that. I'm gonna be doing a little bit of spoiling right now, so skip to whatever number is on the screen if you don't want to hear it. I know you didn't leave, you you want to hear the spoiler. In Nier, there's a character called Emil. He has the powers of petrification through his eyes, where everything he looks at will turn into stone, but this isn't something that he was born with. He was used for an experiment to tame the ultimate weapon. His sister was to become the ultimate weapon, and his eyes were the petrifier just in case she ever got out of control. So one day, he goes to heal a friend that he had to petrify in order to stop some monster, and at the same time, find a cure for his eyes. Then while he's looking for the cure, he comes across this monster and he barely remembers what happens to him. Suddenly he remembers, and then realizes that's his sister. Then after we fight and defeat her, he takes on the physical form of the monster and loses his original body. Granted, now he can finally see, and he has the ability to cure the other person's petrification, but now he hates how he looks, and the villagers don't want him anywhere near their village. Okay, I'll stop. Because they think he's a monster, even though he saved them. And he's like the nicest person in the game who puts the well-being of his friends above himself. He doesn't turn into some evil character because of how poorly humans treated him in the past and currently. He's like, near. Buddy, 
I get it, I'm some kind of monster, they don't want me anywhere near the village, and I really can't blame them. I mean look at me, I'm a floating, smiling skeleton with powers that could destroy the world. So I'll set up a little camp outside the village and roast marshmallows until you're ready to go. That is how you do a character. It's like Kavya had a realization one day and was like, hey uh, um, guys, maybe we should uh, you know, make some characters that people actually like this time, so that when shit hits the fan and our characters' backs are against the wall, People will care, and I do, because I was rooting for everybody throughout the entire game. Anyways, they're on a journey to find Nier's daughter to cure of the Black Scrawl disease. Nier thinks that the magical book Grimoire Weiss possesses the ability to cure his daughter from the disease, so off they go. That's basically the plot. Greatest story ever made, hands down. There was a moment after I completed this game where I needed another game to take me to that level that Nier did. I, I never found it, by the way, if you were wondering. Every other game's story just felt disappointing after experiencing just how great Nier's story was. Now, there tends to be two different opinions when it comes to this. Those who think that it's the greatest story of all time, and those who are wrong for not thinking it's one of the greatest stories of all time. Now, talking about the story any further would be spoiling the game, so I'm just gonna leave it at that. And really, I don't feel like reading through the five pages I originally wrote for this video because I want to make this video as short as possible so I can play Dragon Quest Heroes 2. I'm joking, guys. Calm down. Or am I? No! I want to play Dragon Quest Heroes 2 instead of making this video. Now, the gameplay is something I enjoy, but it's in no way amazing or anything. Nier at its core is an action game, even if it does get sidetracked a lot. The Shades are the main enemies of the game, and they're what you're basically going to be fighting throughout the entire game. Grimmar Weiss, the magical book, possesses magical powers that Nier can use throughout battle, and he'll unlock more as you level up. When using magic, the game will slow down greatly as you charge up your magic or aim. Nier uses three types of weapons. You can choose between daggers, staffs, or two-handed swords. Daggers are the weakest, but they're the quickest and make getting out of fights a lot easier. The two-handed sword will wipe away enemies with ease, but they're really slow. And the staff is good for reach and speed, but it only attacks straight and not horizontal like the dagger or the two-handed sword. The game itself is basically just side quest, and I know that sounds terrible, but it's really not. Why? Because of context. and a lot of RPGs, you would probably hate doing side quests since they really serve no purpose other than getting materials or money in return. But Nier isn't like most RPGs. Like I said, Nier is a father who is trying to cure his daughter from the sickness. And all the villagers know about your struggles, so they hire you so that you can get money to help support your daughter. So in the world of Nier, doing side quests makes sense for a father trying to get money to support his daughter. Now granted, you don't actually spend a lot of that money on Yona. It's mainly just to get money to go to the shops to buy weapons, food, and materials. But again, context. Nier is definitely the most depressing game I've ever played, and I love it for that. One second you'll be happy listening to the characters interact with each other or having a celebration, and then the next second somebody dies. Brilliant. Easily the most depressing game I've ever played. Even in the side missions, a lot of the characters go either insane or die. How oh, many terrible weapons! Killing machines! No one can stop me! <laughs> What the fuck? Sasuke? Before I end this video, there's one thing that Nier must be praised for. Even the people who haven't touched this game will tell you that Nier has one of the greatest soundtracks of all time. It's even gotten to the point where the developers are even upset by the fact that the soundtrack is more popular than the game itself. Like, you wouldn't believe how amazing this soundtrack is. Like, when you're going fishing, this is the type of music you get to listen to while fishing. Okay, you know, I'm lying, that's not actually the song for fishing. But do you see how this song may even fishing look epic? That is the greatness of Nier's soundtrack. Not many games out there can do that. You'll be asking yourself, how can a soundtrack be this amazing? I is it even possible? I you know, I, I must be dreaming. And then you'll come to a realization that it's because you're playing Nier. And then it all begins to make sense. The best part about the songs in this game is that the songs are sung in a made up language. It's just noise that sounds like words, but they aren't even words being sung. Yet I somehow managed to know the lyrics to these songs, even in the made up language. You know, <sighs> why? Nier. What am I gonna do here? I'm trying to get people to go out here to buy this game, and I know they're not gonna do it. All that's gonna happen is that people are gonna be making near jokes in the comment section. When I post a comment on somebody else's channel, they're gonna keep referring to me as that near guy, even though you can clearly see my name is Blandrew. And they'll dismiss everything I just said about this game. Y you know, there is one thing I forgot to mention in this game. When you go to the field, you can ride a boar and drift. If that doesn't sell you on this game, I I really don't know what to tell you. You know, I'm done here. Let's just get to this outro so I can go and play Dragon Quest already. 
Nier is definitely not a perfect game and still has many aspects that could be improved upon in its sequel, such as the combat, the graphics, making more interesting side quests, and for the love of god, get rid of those text based adventures. Luckily Nier Automata seems to be looking visually good and Platinum Games is doing the combat so you know it's gonna be great. You won't find many games like Nier on the market these days, a game where you're rooting for our heroes to accomplish their goals and you want them to succeed, and in typical Drakengard fashion it messes with the player and makes you feel like an ass for everything you were doing. So when you go to replay it again, you'll have a completely different outlook on the game. Nier Automata is coming out soon and you don't have to play this game to understand what's going on in that game, but come on guys, do this for me. I think you'll be pleasantly surprised and thanking me later on, just like others that I've introduced this game to. Nier Automata has a lot to live up to considering just how amazing its prequel was, but if it can really tug at the player's emotion and mindset, they give us more crazy twists and turns, the characters are good and its music remains just as good or even better than the original, then you can bet I'll be there day one.